so wow it looks like i did a whole video on live and it looks like my camera was not on on my computer it's always something so let's pick back up where we left off so out of all the new year's resolutions um losing weight is one starting a new relationships two getting organized um all these things are on the top to-do list for um 2021 we were talking about relationships on our live and i really don't know if um you guys were able to see it or hear what i was talking about so here we go in for another round and that was a whole hour of who knows so we talked about um relationships between um what we were talking about is these relationships between Gambian men and women from the U.S. and women from the U.K. And are they real? And are they genuine? And my answer was, uh, yes, they're real. I think they're real and genuine. I talked to both sides. I talked to the men and I talked to the women. And when I talked to um, the men, let me put this down. I'm just recapping on what the other live was about. Um, excuse me. We were talking about our... <clears throat> so, Gambia is a destination place. A lot of women go there for their destination wedding. They'll meet the husband when they get there. <laughs> They'll find the husband when they get there. They plan their wedding and um, they find their husband when they get there. So we were talking about, um, so there's this one lady, um, an associate, she's in her, in her seventies and, um, she meets, she's from the Netherlands and she met, um, this very handsome Gambian guy who's half her age, younger than her son. And, um, he basically builds her house for her. Yeah. They, she has, oh, it's the same thing. She has um, maybe a 10 room house with a lot of bathrooms. And um, he helps her build that with all of his friends. They're very happy. She had this huge wedding. She's um, petite then rides a motorcycle, very liberated, liberal, took me out to lunch and she um, gave me the scoop on the whole Gambia love situation. Girl, mm, mm, mm. <sighs> She's very happy. After we finished our lunch, she said, I have to go and make my husband dinner. Make your husband dinner, okay. So they, um, She's gonna go make him spaghetti. And she said, even though he's younger than me, I don't hire a cook. I take care of my wife and do this. <laughs> hmm. So on the flip side, I asked um, one of the guys I met there um, through another associate. He goes, oh, my wife is from Switzerland. And we are very much in love. She's older than me, and uh, we spoil each other. And I ask him, I says, um, so why are there so many marriages between, oh, I'm not a cougar, mm -mm. between um, older women from the UK, excuse me, my hair is getting to me, older women, from touchy subject, Older women from the UK. It's itching me. Mm. Okay. Older women from the UK. And 
I've got a scratch. I'm sorry. I mean, ah, okay, I got it. Mm. Older women from the UK and the US and these young men, Gambian men, Senegalese men. So he said, well, let me tell you how the story begins. She said, he said, the Honorable Muhammad, he married his wife and his wife's name was Khadijah and she was 15 years older than him. She did not believe um, in the religion that they were in, but they had a very successful, loving relationship. So we don't have any problem marrying older women. Okay. Anyway, back to her. So he builds her house, this huge house, and um, they're very happy together. She rides her motorcycle, you know, everywhere. Um, and they have this beautiful relationship. I did notice that he is not always with her when she goes on her um, entertainment outings. You know, we went to a couple of events that she invited me to, but um, he wasn't there with her. Now, another associate that I have, she's um, African descendant. She's from the UK. She's in her very late 60s. So she's at this really nice restaurant and um, her waiter comes up to her and she likes the waiter. And he's always serving her this really nice food and I'm not accepting tips and all this other stuff. Um, this is, you know, I'm gonna get back around to the ES situation. But I'm just giving you this little scenario because I do believe Prince Ioko is younger than yes. But I'm not into that gossip and drama. And I'm not gossiping, these are facts. So, anyway, um, so she buys her land in Gambia and she decides to live on it because she does not want to pay for a hotel and motel. And uh, he goes out there, being the gentleman that he is, protects her. And she asks him, she says, well, how much do you, how much do you make, you know, here on this job? He tells her, and she goes, um, well, what if I pay you three times the amount that you make here on this job to help me build my home. Harold's home is a mansion. I'm not talking about a mini mansion. If it was in San Francisco, oh my goodness. You think she's walking on a dirt road within her compound? No. She has tile everywhere, girl. She, when I left Gambia, she had five round houses that must have those ceilings had to be 25 feet tall they come up into like this dome she has two bedrooms two bathrooms each one of her five houses now her home has it's two domes together with a little part in the middle so her home is four bedrooms four bathrooms with an extra sitting room, tile done everywhere. How does she, now, how does she treat him? I would say he is in his early 40s. How does she treat him? But he does uh, get his friends. I don't know what goes on in the bedroom. That's probably where it's all. Maybe, maybe they... Maybe he likes it like that. I don't know. But his friends um, have helped. Oh, God, something is itching me. I must be talking about something I don't need to talk about. Or maybe I need to get out from me. <laughs> Too much data going on around here. I don't know. My back is hair out of place. Um, 
Sorry, guys. Something was itching. Probably shouldn't be talking about this. <laughs> but anyway. <sighs> I need a back scratcher. <clears throat> okay. So, anyway. So, his friends help her build all of these homes. And she was planning on having um, people come over from the UK or the US and stay in them. They're very nice, exquisitely done. Um, just, just awesome, just awesome. And he loves the ground she walks on. Yes. She has a cook, someone that does the laundry, someone to take care of the gate for her, to drive in her Cadillac, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you might say, these relationships, these men have an ulterior motive. They want these women from the U.S. and the U.K. because they, um, because they want um, to become a U.S. or a U.K. citizen. No, that's not the case. They don't even, they don't even want to go. They have no aspiration. They have no intention of ever visiting the U.S. or the U.K. It's just something appealing about this, these U.S. women. Is it the money? No, because yeah, they may spoil them a little bit, but it's not even the money. It's, from what I can see, these men generally love these older cougars. I'm not into that. I need someone at least a year older than me. Maybe two. I don't rob the cradle. I'm not into cougarism. <laughs> cougarism. <laughs> um, now, we were going to talk about we were going to mention the whole ES situation, um, but I'm just giving you these little back, this little background information before we talk about ES. If we talk about ES, <laughs> they say there is someone for everyone. So if you are into the new year with nobody, honey, just wait. There are potentially 10 people on this planet that you could be happy with, right? It's just finding one of those 10 people that could be your soulmate. Your soulmate may be in Africa, may be in China. That's a whole nother situation. Um, the whole situation with marrying men from China, Asia. So if you're a millennial and you don't have anyone, maybe your husband's in China because there's a couple, about 4 million of them looking for a wife. Maybe that's where your husband is at. <clears throat> so I was going to talk to these other two ladies, but I was having connectivity problems, connectivity situation. Um, and so the situation, the, the topic was, would you go to another country and marry a husband? Or find a husband because you can't find one in the US or the UK. Me personally, no. not my aspiration, my dream to get a husband out of Africa. Although I am attracted to African men, I wouldn't do it. So these women do run over some of these men. I don't know what it's like in the bedroom. Maybe nice in the bedroom and everything, but um, but from what I could see, my uh, what I observed, I think they marry them for protection and cheap labor. Let me give you another situation. So an associate of mine that I met in the Gambia, he's a very handsome man from the UK. Um, he met his wife and they married and they had, when they married, she had an eight month old little girl. That's his. And they married. He has a disability. 
he um, was in a very bad motorcycle accident when he was in his teens. So um, the part of his body is paralyzed. Um, but he met this woman from West Africa. They met in Gambia and they married. The baby was eight months old when they married. And um, during this marriage, um, she started having stomach pains, just debilitating, just just horrible stomach pains. He took it to the doctor, Tylenol, aspirin, whatever. They couldn't find out what was wrong. He took it to a doctor in Van Jewel, and they found out, which is so sad, that she had ovarian cancer. So eight months into the marriage, she died. And um, he didn't know who any of her family is. He never met any, any of her family. Didn't even know where her family lived. But all of a sudden, he is thrown into this role of a single parent of a African child. But the child looks more like the mother than like him. Doesn't look like he contributed much, but to the DNA of the child. But he's being the best father that he could be to raise this child and raise her as an African woman. Woman. Um, everybody knows who they are, and he's you know mannerable, and all he ever says is, um, "I can't find anybody in my age to marry." That's a whole other topic for another day. I have a lot to say about that situation. Young talk. No, I'm kidding. Um, back to New Year's resolutions. Um, to be more organized. To find someone that loves you. To um, quit smoking. Um, to quit smoking is not very easy. All I can say is start one day at a time. Make it through that day, maybe the next day. Some people stop drinking. There are so many people that during this whole coronavirus situation, they have relapsed and went back on hard drugs. And uh, with the new year, some people are like, I'm not going to do that anymore. One day at a time. And I really believe in wearing masks and shields. Um, if you notice some of my pictures, I have them on. Don't care if people laugh. You can buy four of them for four, less than four dollars. Remove the film and wear them. And uh, wear them with your mask for protection. And don't worry about what people say, oh, what's wrong with you? You're just really overdoing it. I'm gonna overdo it and live. That's how I feel. And one young lady was actually laughing at me. Okay, I'll be alive. The objective is to stay alive. So I don't care what people say, wear your mask, wear your shield, because your eyes are just as important as your nose. Not getting any fluids in your eyes. And there are some people that are so rude. They're in common areas that you're supposed to have on your mask. They pull it off. Public transportation, whatever, they pull it off. They don't really care. They don't care about you. They don't care about your life. So you have to protect yourself and not leave that up to the other person to protect you because that's not gonna happen. Back to New Year's resolutions. <laughs> Eat healthier. That's what some people, um, I, you know, I haven't got a New Year's, I haven't uh, committed to a New Year's resolution yet. I will. I was supposed to be on this call with people, so I'm just like waiting for them to get on this call. But um, I must say, staying alive. protecting yourself and we're going to end this on this note because um, that's a whole other subject 
and um, catch my next live. I want to talk about, oh yeah, I want to talk about ES and Ioko. I think Ioko is a little bit younger than ES, but I'm not for sure. And um, he asked her, what about my payment? You haven't paid me anything. And she says, she replies, oh, I paid you in. You think he was being used? Who was being used? Was it her? Or was it him? That's kind of a sad situation. But there are some things that should not be discussed. But that's what I'm doing. I love you guys. We'll talk another day. I have some other things to talk about, but I need the other participants to talk about it. I have something juicy for you. But um, it's not gossip, ladies. You know, it's not gossip. Truth. We'll talk later. But I do have something I want to share. But the person with the story has to be on the call. Until next.